Hi guys, welcome back to Hearn Family Homestead. I'm Amanda. Today we're going to be processing an elk that my husband recently harvested. And he actually worked as a meat cutter for a number of years. So he's gonna show us how to part it out and where the different cuts of meat come from. And then we will show you how we wrap it and get it ready for the freezer. So before we start, we like to clean up the kitchen, get everything clean and then make something in the slow cooker because it is a fairly long process, especially if you haven't done it before. We do have it down to a system. We've got cutting stations set up. This is where we'll break down the meat. And then we like to cover the whole table with some butcher paper and set up some cutting stations for steaks and stew meat and things like that. I also went ahead and set up a meat wrapping station. We wrap it with plastic wrap and then butcher paper and this helps it last longer in the freezer and not get freezer burn. It's also a really good idea to recruit some help, which we're blessed enough to have today. Good morning. Hi, guys. You ready? So this is my husband, Jory. You can say hi. <laughs> I don't say hi. <laughs> so we're going to start with working on the back strap on this elk we shot last week. And... And this is the first back strap This is steaks, the first. right? Yeah, this is the first back strap we did. It's real handy to have your tubs all laid out so that you can have uh, an area where you can cut your meat and just put it right into the tub. Another thing that's handy is have some paper towels so that you can, if you see any hair, uh, you can wipe the hair onto the paper towel. It comes off easier on a paper towel than it does a rag. It does. So we have the back of the back strap that connects to the uh, rounds or the hip and then we have the neck piece so after you've cleaned it up you're going to end up with basically the main part of the back strap and that's what you'll cut your steaks out of and so I just start by cutting off all these little chunks of meat so this part here is mostly neck with just a small chunk of back strap you can see how the back strap comes up and then transitions into the neck. So this is just going to be cut off and turned into grind. And then I will flip this over and seam out the rest of the neck portion, just separating the muscles. And then right down here you'll actually have the section that connects to the rib. And so that's a lot of like rib meat. So I'll take that off. So after we got all the chunks off that aren't part of the back strap, I'm just going to go through here and take off the sinew portion. And on a deer, you can actually just pull it off, and sometimes you can on a note too. I just basically slip my knife under it. And just start trimming it off. So we always like to have a scrap box handy so we just throw all our scrap in there. And that usually goes to the dogs or the chickens. So at this point, we want to just cut our steaks. And you want to decide if you want to uh, use it for like fajitas or uh, just to grill it or breakfast steaks. Um, and that's going to determine how thick you cut it. If you're going to do fajitas, you want to do them smaller. For the grill, I like mine a little bit thicker. And I think we've already done some for fajitas and it's a little bit thinner. So we're going to go ahead and make this into like for the barbecue or something. So about half inch to So inch. I'm going to do half inch. Now the tenderloin sits up inside of the rib cage kind of back towards the hips and up against the backbone. So a lot of people think the back strap is the tenderloin, but it's actually inside of the uh, cavity. 
So how we clean that up is we just clean up all the looser meat until you get this long kind of slender uh, looking chunk. And then you can do all kinds of stuff with the tenderloin. We typically just turn it into steaks, but you can also use it for like roast or if you use instant pot you put an instant pot it's really good with swiss steak yeah it's really good for that and it has this little silver sheen here i usually don't cut that off because it pretty much falls apart once it's cooked anyways it's super thin and we'll just get it cleaned up and cut in the steaks and make sure you any of your steaks you cut against the grain so that it's not tough so on this tenderloin you can see how the grain runs this way just like on a back strap so usually I'll cut this section off because that's pretty small and then we'll go and just start cutting our steaks right here is the hind quarter of the elk and um, you can see that the seams are already kind of opened up. I do that before I pack it out. Um, that way all the heat that's stuck in these deep muscles can have a way to escape. Otherwise, you know, if you have a long pack or something, that heat just can stay inside that muscle and, and cause the meat to spoil. So on this hind quarter, the first thing I like to do is take off what we call the top sirloin on a beef, and it'd be this big section here. And it basically starts right above this knuckle bone. So I'm just going to seam that off. And this makes really good roast and steaks. My next step is I will take and cut this knuckle off. I've already basically started. And this pretty much makes good roast stew meat and you can also turn it into steaks. And then on the bottom side, this would be like the inside of the leg. So this will be boned out and turned into roast or stew meat. Got that off the bone, we'll come through here and we'll seam this out. So this would be what they would call the top round on a beef. And this would be the bottom round and this section right here is what they call the eye around. Um, on a deer you would just leave these two together and make a roast or you can seam them out like this and make stew meat or steaks or roast and this is the eye round top round and any of this stuff here you just trim off throw in the trim box And then you do want to take this uh, white shiny stuff off. Um, this stuff here doesn't cook up real good and it's always just kind of there. You can leave it on, but it obviously it's pretty tough to chew, so you have to cut it off later. 
so on this bottom round, we're just going to cut it in half. And we'll make two roasts out of it. The eye round will turn into stew meat. And this is the bottom part of the round. And basically it's pretty gristly in there. So we'll seam this out and it'll give us some good uh, stew meat and burger. And when you say seam it out? So when you seam it out, you're basically just following the, the muscle structure and separating anything that will come apart. And it just makes it easy to get into anything that you want to trim out. And um, it breaks it down a little bit smaller so it's more manageable. For the grinder, right? For the grinder. And that can all be chopped up. And this piece here is the top round. The top round makes good London broils. It makes uh, good roast. It actually makes pretty decent steaks uh, for the barbecue. And it's uh, kind of just a good versatile chunk of meat. But it does take a lot of trimming to get it nice. And we're going to make some steaks out of this piece and then we're going to do some roast. Now on the top here of the top round, you got a big flap of meat here that I like to trim off. And we'll use this for stew meat because it's, it's pretty much Nothing in there that's tough, and it just makes really nice stew meat. And after hanging a while, you'll end up with kind of like a hard uh, skim on your meat. It usually actually cooks up fine, but if it bothers you, you can cut it off. And now on the top round, you got two sections of meat here. This, is, this piece and this piece. The grains are different in this chunk as they are in this chunk. Go ahead and seam these two sections out. It also, if you seam them out before you steak, it'll actually make a prettier looking steak as well. So this one, this is the main chunk of the of the top round. And we'll go ahead and trim off the end, which can make grind. And when you cut this, um, this section here is actually smaller grains than, than as it goes back towards the end. So, and you want to cut them don't cut them like this, but cut them like almost angled into the meat. And once again, we're just going to do half inch steaks. But you can see how those grains are, are real small and it'll be super tender that way. Top 
On the small piece of bottom round or top round, we'll go ahead and kind of trim it up. Get anything off that you don't really want to eat or chew on, and it can be cleaned up and turned into grind. And if you're going to cut this into steaks, the grains are pretty much running this way. But I think for this we're going to make a roast out of it. Now on the leg, the rest of the leg, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you just want to trim this out, trim all the meat off, cut anything off that you don't want to eat, and turn it into burger. So this is a front shoulder, and we'll show you how to break this down. But uh, as we were gonna looking at this meat, we noticed something kind of interesting here. And I cut this open, and right in this front leg here is a piece of broken off canine tooth. Not sure what it is. It probably it looked almost looks like a cougar tooth, but that was kind of interesting to see. We'll say have to save that. So when you the first cut you want to make on the shoulder front shoulder is take off the shoulder tip. Now the shoulder tip muscle basically runs down and into the shoulder blade area. So what I do is I'm just gonna take my knife and run it right along, right down until I hit the bone, the leg bone, and then I'll turn my knife and run it. I like to hold it right along the bone and cut right with it. And as soon as I hit the shoulder blade, I'm going to turn my knife and I'm going to basically go straight up. And that is the shoulder tip right there. And the shoulder tip is okay for roast. Uh, and stew meat. I don't really care for it in steaks. The next thing I do is I'm going to cut the shoulder blade off. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but right here is a where the bone um, of the shoulder blade comes down and meets its socket. So if you cut right where that ends and trim around it, so once you get that cut through, you just pull up on it. Make a little cut where they meet and just bend it back and break that suction on the blade and separate. And so that's the shoulder. This part right here is all going to be burger, so I'm going to set that aside. And on the shoulder, I call it like the T-bone of the blade. It's a bone that pretty much just comes up. And I'm going to trim right down the edge of that. And where when I get to where the meat kind of tails out, I'll just take my knife, kind of like flaying a fish, and I'll push down on my knife and trim that off. And this section of the shoulder is where you would get like a flat iron from uh, off of beef. And we like to go ahead and pull the flat iron out of this because it's pretty good steak and we call it uh, date night meat or date night steak. <laughs> because there's not enough there to feed all the kids. Yeah, there's only enough pretty much for two people. And that's, that's what they would call on a beef a shoulder clod. 
And on the other side, we'll do the same thing, just follow the bone down. And trim it off. And this piece here can make a good roast. We usually just cut it up into stew meat. And on the back side, we'll just trim that off and turn it into burger. It's much easier if you learn to seam all these muscles out before you actually start cutting up your elk into steaks and burger or whatever you're going to make. It just makes it a lot more manageable. You can see how nice and clean that is. We just got a little bit to get off and then we can throw this to the dogs. I want to show you how to do the flat iron real quick. The first thing I'm going to do is just cut the end of the shoulder clod off. And depending on how big the elk is, you can usually get two stakes, or I mean four stakes off of it. And uh, it's basically this piece right here. We're just going to go ahead and cut that out. And we end up with this. And the first cut we're going to make is just going to cut right in the center. And we're just going to do it real lightly till we see sinew down in there. And once you hit that, you're going to turn your knife sideways and you're going to flay your steak off. And that is a flat iron. And you can see that sinew underneath. And we're going to go ahead and do the same the opposite way. Now this one you're going to have to trim up a little bit because it's not quite as much of the flat iron on it. So I just kind of trim it and when I get to the end just cut it off. And on this particular piece you can see where the arrow went through. So we'll cut that off. And those will be steaks. Now on the other side, I typically just go underneath that sinew and clean it off. Is this roast? Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll trim that up later and throw the rest into burger. Cut that off, and then we'll flay the back side of the meat. And there's our other flat iron. So we basically only got three off this one. So for the wrapping, I like to get these really big boxes of plastic wrap um, because they have this cutter here and they're heavy enough that they don't slide around when you're trying to cut your plastic. And then we've got five people in our family so we're going to go ahead and do five steaks in some and ten in others just depending on what meal we're cooking for. And then what I'll do is once I have my meat on here I'll take, I'll take the corner 
and go over, flip it, and then I'll bring the sides in. And you want to wrap it as tight as you can so that there's no air inside the package. And then you just roll it. To make the next step easier, I like to get my tape ready. So I'll just put several on the side of the counter like this. When it comes time to wrap in the paper, you want to stick your package of meat in the corner of your sheet of paper. And this paper has wax on the inside. It's made specifically for wrapping meat. And fold your corner in, fold your sides in, keeping it really tight. And then you want to roll it and just make sure that those sides stay within the outsides of the package. And then you've got your tape ready. So right now I'm wrapping all back strap and I like to wrap like things together so that I can label them when I'm done. Now elk is a fairly large animal, so any step that you can save time on is going to keep your meat from getting too warm during the process of cutting and wrapping. You want to get it in the freezer as quickly as you can. And then I'll label these with permanent marker. And I always put the year on there. And then we like to know who shot it so we know what elk it was from. It's just kind of our personal preference so that we know uh, how old it is and where it came from. When you have a really large package, like a large roast, you can actually use two sheets of paper. I could cut a bigger sheet, but I like to cut them all the same size, it's just easier, because I don't know what order I'm going to be wrapping in. So you can use two sheets of paper, line it up about like that, and then just fold them over from here, and that just keeps everything covered and it keeps there from being any gaps in the sides of your, of your wrapping. So we've got our grinder out here. This particular grinder comes with two different plates. I put the chili plate on first that's got the bigger holes. And then this is the burger plate. It's got a little smaller holes. What we do is we run all the grind that we need to through the chili plate first, and then we mix whatever seasonings we're going to mix with it. If we're making sausage or jerky or anything like that, um, we're gonna make some burger jerky. And then we will take that grind and run it through the finer plate. run it through the grinder twice. It's a lot finer now with the burger plate on there. So we're going to put it in these big tubs and pack it down and then we'll turn it out and I'll show you how I portion it out to wrap. So what you want to do is lay some paper out and then I'm going to turn this out onto my paper.
like that. And then we'll take a big knife and we'll cut it into about the portions that we want. I like to have larger packages of burger. About a pound and a half to two pounds. And then we also wrap the burger with plastic first and then with the wax butcher paper. All right, so we're done for the day. I'm going to save the stew meat for tomorrow and can that in my pressure cooker. Um, but we've got enough work in for one day. Be sure and like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and we will catch you on the next video.